The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of these least command, commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that God himself gave a text of the law, his law, so that his people could live? God himself gave it to him. And this distinguished them from all the other nations. This gift of God. Who should argue with what God says and say there's something else that should govern us? How can we be so ignorant as to not obey what God says? And so Moses tells the people that God gave him these laws and it, they're so intelligently designed for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, you might say. They're so intelligently designed that all the nations in the world would say, these people are amazing with the structure that they have to build a society and a country. All this that God gave them was designed to get them to the promised land by a particular direction and decrees fixed so that they could get there. And especially in the Ten Commandments to protect them not only from other nations, but to protect them from themselves. The Ten Commandments, the first, the first three commandments are all about obeying God so that we could be placing ourselves in worship under His protection. And then, with the standards He gives in the next seven commandments, it's about human relationships so we can protect ourselves from each other and provide an ethic that allows us not to harm one another, but an ethic that allows us to love one another. And then he says, guard and do not forget these things. And teach them to your children. Why? The children who learn the law the, the children who learn the ways of God perpetuate the presence of the law throughout every generation. In other words, these laws given to the people of Israel came by God's mouth himself and his inscriptions. And through teaching them to the children, these are always present from one generation to the next. Now Jesus comes forward and he says he doesn't abolish this law, but in Jesus we find the fullness of the law. And the fullness of the law 
becomes what a platform that we build on in Jesus Christ. And Jesus' agenda is not to get us just to a promised land, but to get us to the promised land. And so the fulfillment of all the law is seen in Jesus. And so we must be directed by his word in the scriptures. We must come to the Mass to experience the sacramental life-giving presence of Jesus so that we can be so saturated with who He is by the power of the Holy Spirit that living the law to get to heaven becomes natural for us. And we can see what is unnatural, especially when we look at the conflict, the division, the anger, the rage, all that stuff that goes on into the world. You see what happens when we do not want to invite Christ in our lives, in our land, in our country. We eject him and we are left to ourselves to people who capriciously compose legislation that stifles us and destroys us. And we become self-destructive and suicidal as a nation. Instead, when we should turn to God and live, which was the design of our forefathers, to have a nation under God. But I, I hate to say it, but we seem to be coming, becoming a nation under Satan. And there is only one way to survive for us, to live, to move, and have our being in Jesus Christ. Regina Jenny, let our alleluia, quia, 